Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here among some, so many great minds, uh, some fantastic presentations. I hope that I will be able to, uh, you know, uh, keep up to the standards. So, Mr. John mentioned that uh, it's very difficult to predict the future. So, during this presentation, we will try to get uh, a few insights or try to, let's say, forecast what is the future for the Internet of Things and, of course, the machine to machine payments. So, uh, when we're talking about Internet of Things, again, uh, we, will, uh, we need to conclude all the devices that are currently connected to the Internet, whether these are smart TVs or uh, smart heating or thermostats, whether it is wireless audio, smart lightning, switches, and, of course, sensors. And let's not forget that we have wearables, fitness trackers, smart glasses, uh, and, of course, smart homes. These are some of the items that the previous... Uh, presenters have touched, but of course we need to mention them when we're uh, talking about the Internet of Things. Well, uh, the forecast is that we will be reaching at least 50 billion devices by 2020, and uh, here we can see uh, a small graph of uh, what is expected, what has happened, uh, some of the milestones when it comes to the Internet of Things. Uh, a prediction from Cisco says that we will reach at least 50 billion devices by 2020. Now, we need to see also some other tangent technologies, such as uh, machine learning. Um, the machine learning is all about prediction. So we're throwing enough data at the machine, um, they're crunching the numbers, and they, they are attempting to predict what will happen based on patterns. We need to look at these tangent technologies in, um, in the relation to Internet of Things and also blockchain, because the, the level of uh, interconnectivity between these uh, technologies is becoming closer and closer together. So when we're talking also about 5G, 5G is, uh, will provide for high-speed transactions. It will be able to uh, collect data, manage the data, store this data uh, through the development of uh, this new tangent technology. Now, uh, there are, of course, we need to mention that there are some health implications when it comes to 5G. Some uh, researchers uh, have given uh, warnings as far as the safety of uh, this new technology. But again, in the age of 5G, we will be able to connect everything. Moving forward, we can see that the Internet of Things is uh, already in our everyday lives, whether it is with uh, smart watches or with uh, smart fridges or with scooters. So um, I'm sure that you, you all have uh, some smart devices at your home or uh, maybe wear um, uh, smart uh, wearables. For me, particularly, uh, every day I take my dog for a walk and uh, the device collects how many steps I made, what is my heart rate, how, how I'm feeling at that moment. I can even track that. So uh, we need to take this level of technology and uh, think about the other side of the coin. What is the implications to our privacy? How is this data being collected and managed? And uh, how can this data be, uh, let's say, used against us in some cases? When we're talking about the Internet of Things, we're talking about an Internet of challenges. Um, as Mr. Claudio mentioned before, it's all about defining some uh, technical standards and, of course, let's not forget about the security when it comes to the Internet of Things. We need to look at open platforms versus proprietary platforms. Some of the biggest tech giants, uh, for example, Apple, they make their devices not to be connected to other devices. So we need to look at, uh, let's say, the, the standards that they follow and how they can move together towards the same direction. Again, we need to see at the, the rate at which new products come into the market versus the rate of uh, the development of new standards. Uh, as businesses race towards uh, developing new products, sometimes they do not pay enough attention to the standards and the interoperability between the devices. And, of course, the problem lies uh, with when you connect anything uh, and everything together to the Internet is that you give the potential to hackers to be able to tap into trapdoors, into our lives, and into our industry. Moreover, when you connect everything with uh, 5G, 
and you move away to centralized cloud servers where all this data can be, can be hacked with uh, a lot of implications in, our, in the privacy of our lives. So is blockchain the enabler? Will blockchain be able to solve the problem that we have today when it comes to the, the security and the privacy? When it comes to blockchain, we can say that uh, blockchain can actually create a lot of cost savings. Uh, an estimate is that uh, one cloud provider, if, if it is hacked, it can cost up to 50 to 100 billion dollars in damages. And of course, let's not forget about the, the privacy and uh, data storage. When you're harnessing and you're storing all this data, it, it can be a challenge. Um, for example, again today, we have seen another exchange uh, leaking a lot of uh, private information of their investors, and uh, we can see that privacy is going to be a very important matter in the years to come. Cloud storing has been, uh, has been proven an, an incredibly risky strategy when it comes to the storing of data. And of course, people nowadays, they do not trust these huge tech giants. If you ask the average Joe, what do you think about Facebook? Most likely, the opinion will be negative as far as the invasion to the privacy of our lives. And let's not forget about the inadequate infrastructure that is currently in place. It's very hard to imagine a, a functioning network supported by the current and already inefficient and insecure centralized models that we have. So when we're talking about blockchain and Internet of Things, there are quite a few commonalities. They face the same challenges and the same market dynamics. So we're talking about emerging technology markets, the lack of standards that restrict the security, the lack of interoperability that increases the fragmentation, and of course, there are impediments to high-scale processing we need to lay out the proper infrastructure in order to move things forward. And of course, these deployments will cost a lot. So what is the future? We will try to uh, predict the future. They say that an economist is a person that is able to predict to some degree the future based on the information that is, um, that is available today. When you don't have a president, uh, it's also very hard to predict what will happen. So when you're talking about uh, blockchain and Internet of Things, of course, the Internet of Things is a more mature, uh, let's say, industry. When it comes to blockchain, we still have uh, very few uh, POCs. Uh, but slowly, we are moving forward, and we can see an increase in the interest and also the, the speed at which you have these deployments. And of course, let's, for, let's not forget that uh, it is the enterprises and the industries that actually make the real decisions. It's not the people that decide exactly uh, what direction we're going to. But hopefully, this can change in the future. So when we're talking about decentralization, here you can see a diagram as far as the decision tree when we're talking with blockchain of things. So are there copies on the ledger? If they're not, uh, then a traditional database should be sufficient. We need to uh, identify the cases in which we should be able to apply blockchain when it comes to the Internet of Things. So, what are the benefits of using blockchain when it comes to the Internet of Things? First of all, improved security. We are able to um, encrypt our data, have it in a tamper-proof uh, way, in an immutable and secure ledger. When it comes to um, the structures, we might be able to have some uh, efficiencies when it comes to cost, when we, um, let's say, deploy all these networks and have it in a high scale. Trustless. Trustless systems means that we are able to, uh, let's say, engage in business without having to uh, put our trust in individuals. Rather, we put our trust in machines and code. And of course, you can have the creation of uh, decentralized autonomous organizations that will be able to take decisions on their own based on code. So here we can see some of, the, some of the categories when it comes to blockchain and Internet of Things. 
The first category has to do with product identity. Blockchain of Things provides an immutable way to authenticate who, what, and where is the origin of the product. The second category has to do with product interactions. So with blockchain, we have an immutable way to know all of the interactions, all of the events, and updates associated with a particular product. Moreover, the second category has to do with product transactions. Blockchain offers an immutable and secure way to authenticate the exchange and settlement of a currency-based or tokenized asset. Machine-to-machine -machine payments is a, it's a fancy word to uh, describe the interaction of machines when it comes to products or services. First of all, uh, an example could be supply chain. So we could be releasing funds or have a payment of goods shipped once it's scanned into a warehouse using various trackers. And uh, as demonstrated in a recent pilot, you can have the execution as soon as, uh, let's say, the bales of cotton enter a specific warehouse. Uh, the oracles will be able to track that you have the delivery of the product and will allow for uh, the smart contract execution and payment. Another use case uh, has to do with the end user authentication. Another tangent technology is biometrics. It's, uh, we have a lot of development when it comes to the um, development of new technologies around biometrics. So these uh, sensors are able to trigger and authenticate rewards uh, based on specific conditions. One of the examples is Spring, Spring Rewards, if I am uh, pronouncing it correct. This is a startup that uh, enables consumers to scan and interact with products through tokens. Another category has to do with on-demand asset sharing networks. Peer-to-peer -peer economies can be created. You have new models of economy arising. For example, you can have um, shared economies like uh, with uh, the bike, with uh, with bikes, with bike rentals, or you can have even another model, a new model of Airbnb, in which the uh, the payment for uh, using a specific uh, service or a room is done in real time. With the moment I enter the room it starts paying, and at the moment I left the room, the contract is ended, and I have already, uh, let's say, the machine has already paid the machine for me staying and using the service. So we are now in a stage where smart cities are developed, smart homes, as we have seen previously, and uh, we, we are trying, to, I'm trying now to make a summary of uh, all the use, the use cases, and where do, does that lead us? So what should we expect in the future? In the first two to five years, we expect to see a lot of centralized uh, um, networks being deployed uh, because of the reason that we mentioned earlier. The, we are centralizing in the beginning because we are able to create various uh, networks and infrastructures, but after five to 10 years, it could be that we can see more developments. More developments meaning that we can enable a, the machine-to-machine -machine payments economy, an economy in which smart contracts will be able to collect all the data, communicate, and uh, interact with each other with all these devices. Now, imagine it is, it is expected for each individual in the future to have at least 100 smart devices in their homes. Having blockchain and securing all that information, it is vital for, the, um, for our survival sometimes. Now, I know this can be like a, a dystopian scenario, but if you do not have these safeguards in place, imagine that, um, let's say, an enemy state can turn off all the thermostats of another nation during a harsh winter. Or let's imagine that self-driving cars can be hacked and uh, the president of a nation can be, let's say, killed in that way by creating an accident by hacking into his smart vehicle. So blockchain is really the enabler, in my opinion, always, and it will provide um, very important benefits when it comes to preserving the privacy and the security in the years to come. Thank you very much.